Hey Summoners, welcome to another episode of Pro Guides Counter Picks. No matter what the meta is, you can't always get a hold of the strongest champions available, and that's why it's important to have a few practice counter picks to whatever champions are running rampant in solo queue. Also, if you're looking for a place to keep up with general meta changes, or you just want to meme about your solo queue games, why not join the Pro Guides League of Legends Discord? We'll be sharing all our YouTube uploads so you'll never miss a beat, while providing a space for League players of all types, so check out the link in the description below. Before we get started, our question of the day is, which off-meta champion do you find the most frustrating in solo queue? We hate tank karma in these parts of town. Let us know all your answers in the comments, and without further delay, let's get into it. We're going to start our counterpicks discussion with two of the beefiest boys in the top lane, Maokai and Urgot. Maokai is rather herbivorous and fails against scaling split pushing top laners, which is why our leading counterpick will be none other than Nasus. Nasus has the outright advantage in a variety of situations against Maokai, especially if the tree himself engages. If the Maokai engages onto you, it's best to drop your E, Spirit Fire, to reduce his armor. From there, you should kite him with auto attacks and Q, Siphoning Strike, either forward or backwards depending on the situation. As long as you're not near a bush, you won't take the bonus damage from Maokai's sapling, so keep that in mind as well. Engaging against Maokai as Nasus is rather straightforward. Use your W, Wither, and Spirit Fire and cut the tree down. Maokai's options are all about getting in. He'll have a hard time getting out when withered. Nasus's bite is a lot stronger than Maokai's bark, but let's go into the finer aspects of the matchup with some tips. Nasus is not designed to smash Maokai early on. Nasus is designed to scale up in most laning matchups, and Maokai is no different. Farm to your 1 to 2 item power spike and take advantage of the tree afterwards. Maokai does not have the tools to punish Nasus when he freezes the wave at tower, so try your best to freeze at tower as much as possible. If anything goes wrong, relax, Nasus infinitely outscales Maokai. Don't let an early death get you down. If Maokai is more useful in team fights, feel free to focus on split pushing a la Fiora or Jax. Nasus can put on a similar amount of pressure in a side lane. Look for an early sheen into Kindle Gem for cooldown reduction to stack on Siphoning Strike. Look to complete Trinity Force with the Sheen and build Steric's Gauge, Mercury Treads, and eventually Spirit Visage. Olaf is a very aggressive counter pick into Urgot and usually wins the fight if engaged upon. Here's how. Before level 6, if Urgot uses his E, Disdain, to close the gap and flip you, instantly throw your axe and activate W, Vicious Strikes. Attack Urgot while you move toward your axe and profit. You should win the extended fight with Conqueror and the bonus attack speed from Olaf's passive. In the event that Urgot engages on you after level 6, you should play out the situation exactly the same. Except this time, be sure to save your ultimate, Ragnarok, for Urgot's ultimate, Fear Beyond Death. When you fall into execution range and Urgot tries to reel you in, popping Ragnarok will free you from the chains. In the event that you want to chase down Urgot himself, you'll have to dodge Urgot's Q, Echoing Flames, otherwise the slow will make it difficult to continue. Olaf isn't the most technically inclined champion, but here's a few tips in the Urgot matchup. Olaf can use his ultimate to break Urgot's ultimate chains. Don't forget this, it's vital to the 1v1 matchup. You should only look to all in as Olaf if you have the bigger minion wave and dodge Urgot's echoing flames, otherwise it's a waste of time. As Olaf, try to hit and stay on the side of Urgot where his passive has already been used. That bonus damage hurts. Build Black Cleaver, Executioner's Calling, Ninja Tabby, Blade of the Ruined King, and Steric's Gage. A small, okay, huge disclaimer when it comes to countering jungle matchups. Everything is about lane priority. These tips assume that both champions are fighting in a vacuum, red smite and all. Without further ado, on to our first counter pick. When you engage Kane as Shin Zhao, watch out for Kane's W Blade's Reach. With that in mind, just force the engage with all your abilities. Use your E Audacious Charge to close the gap and immediately follow up with W Wind Becomes Lightning. After you get that quick damage off, auto attack and use Q Three Talent Strike to auto reset and eventually knock Kane up. Fight him with fully stacked Conqueror and Prophet. If Kane is trying to use his E Shadow Step, use Three Talent Strike immediately to potentially knock him up as he enters the wall. If you're engaging a Shin Zhao, it's not all that different from being engaged upon. You just dive in with all your abilities and wiggle around to dodge Kane's W. Early game, he'll have to concede every time. That was pretty straightforward for Shin, but here's a few tips. Kane will eventually outscale Shin in a long game, due to the nature of the two champions. Kane just has too much healing and crowd control in his kit. You're stronger early game as Shin, so use that early power to invade Kane and take his camps, assuming your laners have priority. 
Rek'Sai has all the tools to fight an Evelyn, and that usually means Evelyn won't be taking the fight head on. In the event that they are fighting you, you probably messed up big time. Generally speaking though, Evelyn will try to engage with her W allure. If it seems like you're going to lose, just burrow away. In a more realistic situation when you're engaging, you want to burrow towards her and knock her up using all three empowered auto attacks from Q, Queen's Wrath. Follow that up with a fully charged E, Furious Bite, as it does true damage with a full Fury Bar. You will always win this fight with Red Smite and Conqueror. Here's a few notes on a fairly one-sided matchup. When you're burrowed, you can see Evelyn's stealth movement with Rek'Sai's burrow passive, Tremor Sense. Build Mercury Treads ASAP to reduce the duration of Evelyn's charge and general damage output. If Evelyn uses her ultimate to get away, fear not, you can always follow up with your own ult, Void Rush. Garen can be a menace for numerous mages and assassins, and Fizz is no different. If Fizz uses his Q, Urchin Strike, to engage the fight, follow up with an auto attack of a Q of your own in Decisive Strike. If Fizz jumps in the air with his E, Playful Trickster, chase him down and activate Garen's W, Courage, before he lands. If for some reason Fizz engages you with Playful Trickster, use Courage before he lands and chase him down with Decisive Strike and Judgment to spin to win. When engaging Fizz, you kind of just run at him. Run at Fizz with Decisive Strike and use E, Judgment, as soon as he's silenced. Be prepared to use Courage for damage reduction as soon as he tries to fight back. Generally speaking though, Fizz will be forced to use Playful Trickster to avoid the silence from Decisive Strike. In that case, just rinse and repeat until he can't Playful Trickster away. Here's a few notes for all the Demacian hopefuls out there. As Garen, do not be afraid to purchase an early Null Magic Mantle or Mercury Treads. That MR goes a long way. Prioritize Trinity Force, Phantom Dancer, and Death's Dance for your build path. The little Yordle certainly has plenty of tools to deal with Cassiopeia if played effectively. If Cassiopeia engages first, use your E Event Horizon while running away to force her to play in your effective range. This allows you to stay safe with potentially getting damage in with Q Baleful Strike and W Dark Matter. If Cassiopeia tries to run you down, you can also use Hextech GLP in conjunction with the Glacial Augment Keystone to slow her down and easily land Event Horizon, giving you the time to counterattack. If engaging, you typically want to open with Hextech GLP or Twin Shadows to use Event Horizon and trap Cassiopeia, forcing her to dance around as you land your abilities from a safe range. Be aware though, if you're looking at her, she can always cast her ultimate Petrifying Gaze. Be ready to look away at the right moment. There's a little more nuance when it comes to this counterpick, so here's a lot of tips. Cassiopeia cannot escape Vagar's Event Horizon while inside because she has no movement abilities apart from Flash. Be wary of her flashing over the cage to run you down. You're a burst champion and Cassiopeia has sustained DPS. If she gets onto you, you will almost certainly lose. Be sure to build Hextech GLP and Twin Shadows with the Glacial Augment Keystone. Do not be afraid to use these for pressure. The cooldowns are relatively low with Ingenious Hunter. Vagar scales infinitely with this passive, so don't forget to last hit with Baleful Strike. Vagar has great damage potential, but your main goal isn't to kill Cassiopeia, it's to contain and shut her down while you eventually outscale her. If Cassiopeia roams outside of mid lane, don't be afraid to use Twin Shadows to run her down. Disclaimer! In this case, AD carry counters does not imply that the AD carries are running at each other without supports for a 1v1. The point of these AD carry counters is to find opportunities to outpush the enemy and minimize what the enemy AD carry wants to do. It's worth noting that a lot of the lane matchup also comes down to the supports. This is less about engaging from one side or the other and more about how the champions want to play. In Ash's case against Varus, you want to use your range to farm and poke Varus with her W volley whenever possible. Do not engage in an auto attack war with Varus unless you have the minion wave advantage or support engage. If you do, Varus can stack autos on you and apply his blight passive, making his hail of arrows or piercing arrow hurt a lot. Here's a few notes of the matchup for all those Ash hopefuls out there. Ash has a decent auto attack range at 600. Use that to safely farm minions and poke effectively. You can also dodge Varus' abilities fairly easily with the bonus movement speed from the Celerity Room. You can always poke Varus back with your own Comet and flex that your ultimate is global while his isn't. Not only do you match and nullify Varus' early poke with your own, but you can easily outscale him with raw DPS in late game teamfights since you build traditional AD carry items. Considering that both you and Varus have engage ultimates, be ready for a lot of teamfights. You have to be mindful of your poke wars. Ash has the tools to win, but a straight up no brain poke war will go in Varus' favor. We have two different flavors of Ash builds for you today. Firstly, Saskio's Super Solo Q build, Essence Reaver, Runan's Hurricane, and Trinity Force with the Ultimate Hunter Rune. 
Ash's enchanted crystal arrow cooldown can go as low as 27 seconds, even lower with Cloud Drakes. Well, now that we've got the spice out of the way, here's a standard build. Blade of the Rune King, Runan's Hurricane, Infinity Edge, and Phantom Dancer. Now that we've explained how to counter Varus, here's how to use Varus to counter Draven. Firstly, never take a straight 100-0 fight against Draven, you will always lose. Though Draven boasts higher damage output than Varus, you can easily shut down his lane pressure with Poke from Piercing Arrow and Hail of Arrows. Be sure to focus on taking small trades with your support. If Draven slows you and runs you down, things can get pretty bad. More specifically, a common trait against Draven is to auto-attack him once and trigger the Blight stack with Hail of Arrows, slowing him down and removing his option to move forward and trade. The lane is all about spacing and using Hail of Arrows and the bonus movement speed from Celerity to duck away from Draven's all-ins. Keep that in mind. Here's a few quick notes on the matchup. Varus doesn't have the brawn that Draven does in lane, so your main goal is to shut him down. Past the laning phase, you will easily outscale Draven's DPS and utility with your ultimate Chain of Corruption. If you use your ultimate on Draven, you will stagger his damage output as he'll be unable to pick up his spinning axes while rooted. Build Blade of the Ruined King, Gwinsu's Rage Blade, and either Phantom Dancer or Runance. From there, adapt to the situation at hand. Remember, these counterpicks are not suited for supportal combat. It's more about the little things and accruing small advantages in the laning phase. Sona has the poke advantage against Lulu in the laning phase, so be sure to use that. Look to poke with Q, Him of Valor, and auto attack with your Q empowered power cord when you can. If you're able to stun Lulu with Sona's ultimate crescendo, it's likely that you'll be able to burst her down before she can follow up with her own utility. Sona has more lane pressure than Lulu, but here's a few things to keep in mind. Both champions scale really well and offer great utility, but Lulu is more dependent on her team composition, while Sona's buffs are generally universal. The build path is pretty simple. Build Athene's Unholy Grail and Ardent Sensor. Don't forget the control wards either. This counter pick is a lot less dynamic than Sona into Lulu, but it's just as effective. If Janna looks to trade with you, instantly throw down your Q, Star Call, and E, Equinox, to silence and disengage. If Janna used her W, Zephyr, to trade, the snare from Equinox will probably land too. Apart from trades, just look to sustain the Janna lane. It should be pretty easy with Soraka. A few final notes on a fairly vanilla matchup. If Janna is channeling her ultimate Monsoon, you can easily cancel it with the silence from Soraka's Equinox. As for the build path, focus on Redemption, Athene's Unholy Grail, and Ardent Sensor. That concludes our latest episode of Pro Guides Counterpicks. Thank you so much everyone for watching. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to take your game to the next level. Also, keep an eye on our YouTube channel, where we're constantly uploading new content just like this. Good luck out there in the Rift, and we'll see you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.